I want to talk about John von Neumann, the smartest person the world has ever known. He was so smart. When he read a novel, he could recite it word for word decades later. He could do mathematics like instantaneously in his head. Uh, he worked down the hall from Einstein, but they didn't collaborate much because Einstein was just too slow. For von Neumann, talking to any of us was like us talking to a three-year-old. But he did so many things. He contributed to zillions of fields in math and engineering and all the sciences. You'd think he was an idea guy. Actually, he was really good at recognizing a good idea that someone else had and then like formalizing it, ratcheting it up five levels and making a whole field, like game theory. He and Oscar Morgenstern founded this and, and uh, von Neumann proved that in some zero-sum restricted situations, you can minimize your losses. No games were played, no fun was had. Similarly, in information theory with Claude Shannon, uh, they, they talked a lot about information, they proved some things, but no meaning was delivered. Von Neumann can formalize anything. I learned about him in computer science class because he contributed to the invention of the von Neumann architecture in the computer, which let us put our code in the computer with the data instead of having to change wires around all the time. Um, he contributed to a lot of the early computers, like really helped build uh, the first computers, not just because he could solve the math and engineering problems, but because he understood how to get funding. He was actually good at like working the politics as necessary. And he was the first computer scientist. I know, because he invented the merge sort, so he was the first person who could pass the interview. <laughs> but he understood that computers at their heart were a logic problem. The hardware was an implementation detail. Oh, people loved him, though. He threw great parties. He was super polite to everyone. Uh, he liked jazz and drinking and um, dirty limericks, not like this one. He liked driving fast while reading which got him into a lot of wrecks. Uh, but his friends at Princeton, they, they got him out of trouble a lot. Von Neumann was born in 1903 in Budapest, which was fortunate because he was Jewish and uh, Budapest was the best place to be right then. Anti-Semitism was at an all-time low there. His dad was a banker, so they had money. He had great governesses and rooms full of books. The best high schools in the world, that's, that's the thing. Until 1919, and then there's like this communist revolution backed by Russia, and things just went downhill from there. So uh, von Neumann got out, he went to Berlin, he came to the United States. He liked the United States, he liked the materialism. And that worked out well, because then he was here to contribute to the Manhattan Project. Uh, because his calculations and his mathematical modeling contributed greatly to the implosion bomb that was used on Nagasaki. So without his assistance, we, uh, yeah, we only would have been able to kill half as many people. After the Manhattan Project, after the bombs were dropped on Nagasaki and Hiroshima, uh, the other scientists in the Manhattan Project formed um, organizations to be like, let's never do this again. Von Neumann didn't join. Von Neumann kept building bigger and better computers so that he could build a hydrogen bomb. He believed, oh, and he died of cancer but not before he gave us the concept of mutually assured destruction. The idea that we need two or three times as many bombs as necessary to destroy the entire planet. He was implacably certain that if we didn't bomb the Russians first, Stalin would bomb us. Now he credits game theory with that, with that derivation, but I think it might've had something to do with his childhood. The thing about game theory is it assumes the rules are fixed, the players can't talk to each other, and nobody ever learns anything. But no amount of logic can predict what people might grow into. Logic can help us play the system, but it doesn't help us change it. So logic and rationality, it's not the best for everything. We can use our logic to fuel our creativity instead of the other way around. So are you the smartest person in the world? If not, congratulations. You probably don't read while you're driving. And you might know that there's something better in life than winning. It's continuing to play. <laughs>